the first thing I want you to do to get started is to head over to the course resources and download the starting files for the Pomodoro project. Once you've got that, then you should be able to unzip this file and get hold of the starting folder. Next, I want you to open up that folder using PyCharm. So in my case, my folder is inside my downloads and then I'll just click open. And PyCharm should automatically configure the latest version of Python you've got installed. So if you take a look inside this folder, there's two files. There is a image of a tomato, which we're going to use in our project. And there's also a main.py with a couple of sections already hashed out for you. And we've also included some constants like some color hex codes or a font name or the number of minutes for working, short breaks and long breaks. So that's already in the starting file. The first thing we're going to do is to set up our UI. So under the section UI setup, we're going to create a new window using TK Inter and we're going to get the window to run and give it a background color. Pretty simple. So let's go to the top of our file and import our TK Inter module. And then if we scroll down to our UI setup section, let's go ahead and create a new window from the TK class. Remember that our TK class is one of the classes from TK Inter. So you can either tap into the TK Inter module and then get hold of the TK class like I have done here. Or as in our case, if we're going to be using a lot of classes from TK Inter, then we can simply say from TK Inter, let's go ahead and import all of the classes. So that way we can straight away refer to this TK class. Now that we've created our window, the next thing we can do is to set the title of the window, which you can of course call it anything you want, but in my case, I'm going to set it to just Pomodoro, which just means tomato in Italian. So now that we've got our Pomodoro, then we're going to get our window to show up by using window.mainloop as usual. And now if we run this code, our main, you can see we've got a blank window, a title, and we're ready to go to the next step. The next step is to put an image into our program so that we can have this tomato as the background of our program. And then we can put some text on top, which is going to signify our countdown timer. This is what we're aiming for. But to achieve this and to be able to put images onto the screen, which look like this, we're going to have to learn about the TK Inter canvas widget. A canvas widget is a little bit like a real life canvas, really. It allows you to layer things one on top of the other. So you could draw something and then you can draw something on top of that. And what it allows us to do in our case is to place an image onto our program and then to place some text straight on top of that. In between our window creation and the window main loop is where we're going to create our canvas. And our canvas is created using the canvas widget, of course. One of the things that we can specify when we create our canvas is a width and a height. And that will be a value in terms of pixels. So we know that we want to display this tomato image inside that canvas. And we can see that this has a roughly a width of 200 and a height of 223. So let's create a canvas that's roughly about the same size as the image. So we'll put a width of 200 and a height of 224, just so that we work with some even numbers. Once I've created my canvas, the next thing I want to do is to add my image to it. And we can use a method that the canvas has, which is called create image. And as soon as I type create, you can see there's actually a whole bunch of other methods like create the text in the canvas, create a rectangle, create an oval. And all of these things could be overlapped on each other inside the same canvas. Now, when we create an image, there's a couple of things which are required. The first thing is the X and Y positions of this image in the canvas. Given that we have a width of 200 and a height of 224, I want my image to be bang in the center of the canvas. So I can provide the X value as half of the width 
and the y value as half of the height. In addition to the x and y values, we also have to specify a image. But I can't just simply just type the name of my image, which is tomato.png, because that is not the type of data that this argument is expecting. What it wants instead is something called a photo image. And this class comes from TKinter, and it's basically a way to read through a file and to get hold of a particular image at a particular file location. In my case, the file location is in fact tomato.png. And if your image was stored in, say, another subfolder or in a different place, then you should provide the relative or absolute file path to get there from where your code is, which is the main.py. But in our case, it's very easy. They're both in the same folder. So we can simply specify our file name like so. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to save this photo image in a variable so we can refer to it later on. I'm going to call this our tomato underscore IMG. Feel free to call it anything you want. And that is the data that goes into this image argument. Now we've created our canvas, we've created our photo image, we've told our canvas to create an image at this position, and then we've put the image inside. The final thing we need to do is to pack our canvas or use some other sort of method to specify the layout of how the canvas is going to go on the screen. And now we can hit run and we can see our image on the screen. So now notice how the image is basically taking up the entire space of the window. And in fact, the window is resizing itself to fit this image. Wouldn't it be better if this screen was actually a little bit bigger so we don't just look at the image of a tomato? We can do that by getting our window to be configured. And the configuration that we want to change is the padding. So I'm going to change the pad X and pad Y. On the X axis, on the horizontal, I'm actually going to add a whole 100 pixels of padding on both sides. And then on the Y axis, pad Y, I'm going to change that to 50 so that it's got 50 pixels of padding on the top. That's looking pretty good, other than one small defect. You can see that our tomato image is a little bit cut off on the left. And I suspect this is because the actual image is a little bit shifted over to the left. So we can actually adjust this X position to be a little bit more to the right. And that way our tomato can be centered on screen without being cut off on either side. So now that we've tweaked our image and we've displayed it on screen, the next thing to do is to display some text. As you noticed before, in addition to canvas.createImage, there were a whole bunch of other things we could create, including some text. This createText method works very similarly to the createImage method. Notice how the first thing that's getting highlighted is the single asterisk args, and then we've got our two asterisk quags. So remember from the lessons yesterday, these arguments are the unlimited positional arguments, and these arguments are the unlimited keyword arguments. So the keyword arguments here are, for example, the image or the background color or anything else, but these are the X and Y values. So creating the text, we also have to provide a X and Y value. So I'm just going to try the same values as the image to see how that looks. And now we can add some keyword arguments, for example, the text. So I just want it to say 00, zero colon zero, 00, which looks pretty much like the clock. Now, if we run our code, you can see we've got a little bit of text showing up. Now, notice how it's a little bit high up on the tomato, because remember, the tomato starts at the top here and ends here. So that is the center of the tomato image. But we can move it down a little bit so that it's actually centered in this red part, the circular part. With a little bit of experimentation, I think this 103, 130 actually works quite well. And it's pretty much bang in the center of the tomato. 
let's modify this text in some other ways. We can change the fill, which is basically the color of the text. And I'm going to change that to white that you can see here. And then I'm going to change the font as well. And this is going to expect a tuple. So it's going to be the font name and then the size and then whether if it's bold or italic or whatever else you want to do. Now in the constants here, I've already got the font name defined, which is going to be courier that we're going to be using. So we can straight up add our font name and then we'll add a font size as 35 and we'll say, yeah, make it bold. So there you have it. We've got our tomato. We've got our text showing up as the countdown timer. Now, the final thing I want to do is just change the background color to a slightly nicer looking color. Now, one of my favorite websites is this one called Color Hunt, which shows you a whole bunch of different color palettes that professional designers have created. And it makes it really easy for us to just snap up some of these hex codes and use them straight away in our program. Now, the one that really caught my eye is this one because it has a bit of the tomato color palette. So I've transferred all of these hex codes to the constants in the starting file. So you can see I've got the pink, the red, the green and the yellow. And we're going to be using that across our program to give it that consistent color theme and make it look like it's been professionally designed. So what I want to do is I want to change the windows background color and I can do that through the keyword argument called BG for background and I can set it to a hex code. So a hex code starts out with the pound sign and then it's some numbers and some letters. Now I've already got all of that for you and all you have to do is just to put down the name of the constant. So this should not be in quotation marks because it's not the word. It's in fact referring to that particular variable and the string that's held inside. So now if we check our screen, you can see the background has been changed to that nice yellow color, sort of rice uh, or hay color. But the tomato, namely the canvas, still has that white background. So let's change the background color of the canvas as well. And again, it's using the BG. So some of these you'll notice are standard attributes that we can change, like the width and the height and the background color, which is standard across all of the widgets. And some other things like file here are some of the more specific keyword arguments. So let's apply this yellow to the background of the canvas. And you can see that the canvas is now yellow as well, but it's still got this little white border, which denotes the edges of our canvas. To get rid of that, I found a specific keyword argument that would actually help. And it took quite a bit of digging around, quite a bit of stack overflow searching and Googling in order to find this. It wasn't very straightforward because TKinter is not well documented, unfortunately. But thankfully for you, all you have to do is find your canvas and on the line where you've created it, go ahead and add this keyword argument. It's called highlight thickness. And be sure that you spell it right because it's really long. And remember, there's two T's because it's highlight and thickness. And there's nothing in between, no underscore, no nothing to separate it. I think the TK Inter team could have really done a little bit better here. But hey, if we set the highlight thickness to zero and we rerun our code, then you should see that it now looks pretty good. And our canvas is now completely the same color as the background of the window. And you can't tell where the window begins and the canvas ends. Now, the only problem is once we've removed that border around the canvas, our tomato is once again shifted a little bit. So we can actually adjust this and we can change this back to 100. And I'm going to change it both for the text and the image. And we can make that tomato image perfectly round once more. With TK Inter, I found that you have to do quite a bit of tweaking around, especially with these positions. And you'll spend some time judging it by eye in terms of the size and the width and where to place it. But we have now successfully managed to place an image onto the screen, change the background of the window, keep it consistent and add a little bit of text onto our tomato.
So now we're ready for the next step. In the next lesson, we're going to create the rest of the user interface. And that is mostly going to be up to you. So for all of that and more, I'll see you on the next lesson.